Hello everyone, this is Doc Toom of CDB Review. We'd like to welcome you to this very short testmanship talk. Some tips about those who are heading to their board exams and taking MCQ or multiple choice questions. Now, a few reminders for those taking the exam. So once you get your identification sheet, your answer sheet, please handle them with care. Check if the serial number of the examination identification sheet and your answer sheets are the same for all sheets. If there are any discrepancies, return the set to your room watchers for replacement. Check if there are any defects, unnecessary marks on your examination sheet, your identification sheet, and make sure the proctors know about this before the start of the exam. Now, do not fold, mutilate, your examination identification sheet and your answer sheets. Make sure you take extra care and keep them clean. Now, how to mark your examination identification sheet? Use a standard number two pencil. Do not use too much pressure. Make the mark dark and straight and strictly no erasures allowed. Just take a deep breath. I know you're scared, you're anxious, you're doubtful, but always remember, there must be a reason why the God that you believe in made you reach this far. Now, how to accomplish your examination identification sheet? Make sure you put in your last name, first name, and middle name properly. I hope during the start of the exam, you can still remember your name and shade properly. Now. When you handle the test question sets, there's usually two sets there. Check if the number of pages of the test question set is complete and there's no misprint. Usually, the proctors will announce to you how many pages there are. Make sure it's one to 100. Normally, you can use your test question set as your scratch. Keep the test question set stapled until the end of the exam. Now, Examination day is here, the day you have waited, the day the Lord has made for you. Now, do not cram too hard, please. There is no point in cramming, overloading your already saturated brain. The brain has limits. It is better to be well rested, to be physically, mentally, and spiritually prepared compared to over cramming. The last thing you want is for your brain blacking out. Do not use too many exhausted techniques. Stick with your usual ritual, your usual routine for the exams. Please do not burn the midnight oil when the exam is very close. Maintain integrity at all times. It is better to get an honest zero than a cheated 100. Remember, we are dealing with lives here. We are vying for our license as physicians. Integrity at all times. And our secret weapon heading to the exams. Always pray. Pray before the start of the exam, in between, and right after. Pray for fairness, a just exam. Pray for your board examiners. Pray for everyone else taking the exam. Now, what to bring on your examination day? Make sure your notice of admission, your NOAA is there, PRC official receipt, application stub, two or more pencils. You don't have to bring one pencil for each of the 12 subjects. A ball pen with black ink only. This is just for the start, the filling up of the examination sheet and your long brown envelope. Now. I strongly suggest you bring a long brown envelope, which also has a plastic cover, just to make sure whatever is inside does not get wet. Don't forget the following, a wristwatch to help you pace, light snacks and water, candy, such as menthol, and my favorite, white rabbit, because of its high glucose content. Bring stimulants, white flower, Vicks, inhaler, Chinese bombs, and menthol bombs, but please do not bring omega or omega efficacy oil. 
Now, what to wear on examination day? Number one, make sure you wear clothes. No, just kidding aside, don't be too stressed. Your examination is here, great things await you, and I'm waiting for you at the finish line. For your examination date, you have to wear your intern's uniform of your respective schools. So, school uniform, male and female. Now, pay attention to the proctor at all times. When in doubt, ask questions. Do not leave any blanks. Remember, when you answer, you don't know the answer right away. Fold the edge of that questionnaire page. Make doggy ear so you can go back there later. Proceed. Sometimes you get enlightenment and you get to find answers in the succeeding questions or something just pops out. You don't get any deductions for blank answers. That's why all, ans all questions must be answered. Do not leave any blanks. Now, 100 items, examination, two hours allotted. That's roughly 83 seconds per item. Mark unanswered questions. Transcribe carefully. I strongly encourage you. Do not transcribe right away once you start the exam. Why? You might make mistakes when you have blanks in between. Write your answers, your final answers at the side of your questionnaire or make a circle, make an X, crash out and transcribe later when you have completed your answers just to avoid mistakes. Now, these are the parts of a multiple choice question. We have the STEM which is usually a clinical case presentation or simply a recall, analysis, comprehension, or semi-identification question. We have the lead-in question, series of choices, and typically one correct answer and four distractors. Now, some tips on multiple choice questions. Always remember the following. Number one, eliminate answers you know aren't right. Once you know there's a choice, which is not correct. Eliminate. Read all choices before choosing your answer. If, the, if there is going to be something blank, always remember there is no guessing penalty and always take an educated guess and select an answer. But you make your educated guesses or logical guesses later when you really don't know what the answer is. And a downfall of many students. Don't keep on changing your answers. Usually the first choice is the right one, unless you misread the question. Repeat, don't keep on changing your answers. Usually your first choice is the right one, the gut answer, the gut feeling. And the only time you change this is if you have misread the question. Now, what about the concept of all of the above and none of the above? If you are certain one of the statements is true, then don't choose none of the above. If you are sure that one of the statements is false, then don't choose all of the above. In a question with all of the above choices, if you see that there are at least two correct statements, then all of the above is probably the answer. And usually, the correct answer is the choice with the most information. Now, for the Philippine Physician's Licensure Exam, please don't forget qualifiers like the word except. And you might get, let's just say, a touch of Morse type. Like 1, 2, and 3 are correct. 1 and 2 are correct. This will not be discussed in this short video. Now, some issues related to test wiseness. Grammatical cues. One or more distractors. This happens when one or more distractors don't follow grammatically from the stem. Okay. So pay attention to absolute terms such as always and never. Most especially when they're used in the options. The long correct answer. The correct answer is theoretically longer, more specific, and more complete than the other options. Pay attention to nouns, verbs, modifiers, such as the age, the gender, 
Is it a male? Is it a female? Is it a pediatric patient? It is, is it a senior citizen patient? What is the presenting complaint, the chief complaint, the duration? Is it acute? Is it chronic? Is there a family history? Is this something genetic? Physical exam findings. Take note of the positive results, whether it's positive or negative, and initial treatment, subsequent findings, physical exam, the key words which we talk about in the classroom. Now, the POE or the process of elimination. Find the wrong answers. Okay, so go back. Find the wrong answers. Once you start putting wrong answers, then you can focus now on what are the possible answers. Now, reminders. Make circles, underline. Keywords, qualifiers, circle words such as accept, least, false, incorrect, and not true to raise your personal awareness that they are part of the question or the case. Cross out the negative and read the stem as though it were a positive. This applies when you have the word except at the end of the question. Now keep your original answers as I mentioned earlier. To change or not to change an answer is a difficult decision. Good performers change answers, but only if they have a reason to change their answers, such as misreading, misinterpretation, or a newly acquired insight. Read carefully and note key descriptors. Words such as chronic, acute, greater than, less than, is this an adult, is this a child? And pay attention to prefixes such as hyper, hypo, non, un, pre, and post, to name a few. Analyze base words and affixes. Study a question at the world, word level, and it will help you remember salient information. Look for base words or related words or what we say in the CDB classroom as the key words. Determine Latin or Greek words because sometimes you can use this to assist you with regards to their meanings. Reread your underlines and markings when you are down to the two choices or what we call the 50-50 rule. Always in circle, highlight, underline, in circle. Keywords. Once you're at the 50-50 rule, which means you are now deciding between two choices, go over what you encircled and ask yourself which remaining answer most likely corresponds to the keywords that you encircled. Note qualifiers that broaden the focus because they may be correct. Circle words such as generally, most, often, some, and usually. And my dear students, mga anak, my children, everyone else preparing for their licensure exams or simply any examination, you are now at your finish line. After the exam, in between sessions and overnight, take a well-deserved break. Eat nutritionally. If you feel the urge to study, study material that is only comfortable. If you discovered a recurrent theme, trending topics, diseases, references, you might desire to consult that set of information. Do something pleasurable, relax, get a massage, get a good night's rest, take a power nap, pray, celebrate and give thanks because you have reached this far. And this is Doc Toom, your master guru. I'd like to remind you of the following Lessons in Life from Ogmandino's Greatest Miracle. Count your blessings. This exam is for your family. This exam is for everyone who supported you through your education. Proclaim your rarity. And at this point, go another mile. My prayers are with you. God bless on your examination. This is your med guru of CDB signing out. And best of luck. And may the force be with you. Thank you.